Now, earlier, the U.S. made an attempt on the life of another man it considers its enemy. On Saturday night in Tripoli, the compound of Colonel Gaddafi was hit by an airstrike. He escaped death, but three of his grandchildren and his youngest son were reportedly killed. But as RT's Irina Galushka reports, Bin Laden's death helped bury the news. It was a death that got buried under the barrage of breaking news. Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi's 29-year-old son and three grandchildren were reportedly killed by NATO airstrike on Saturday night. All children were said to be under 12 years old. But within 24 hours, the U.S. president announced the death of the world's number one terrorist. News which overshadowed anything coming from Libya. The idea of extrajudicial assassinations just days after uh, NATO attempted to assassinate uh, Gaddafi and ended up killing his son and grandchildren. Uh, once again, we see another type of extrajudicial assassination going on, which of course is an international war crime. But uh, in this case, it's, uh, it's OK because it's the boogeyman that everyone loves to hate. The coalition commanders have protested they are in full compliance with the UN Security Council resolution on Libya and only target military objects, insisting they're not targeting any one person in particular. This despite two recent airstrikes targeting known whereabouts of Gaddafi. This was an attack on a civilian structure. This was Gaddafi's personal compound. They murdered three of his grandchildren, one of his sons, uh, well, I think they're very delighted to have gotten rid of any, anybody with the name Gaddafi or associated with him, but they really wanted to get him, and they're not done trying. The idea is to kill him. This was a war crime, but of course, being in Libya at all is a war crime. All of the complicit NATO countries are committing war crimes every single day, attacking civilian targets, killing civilians. Libya first! The bombings sparked riots, with Gaddafi supporters storming the Italian and British embassies in protest. And some believe, should the coalition forces continue on their chosen course in Libya, the situation will go from bad to worse. NATO's activities has only strengthened the loyalties and resolve of Gaddafi supporters. For each bomb that's dropped on Tripoli and other Gaddafi loyalist strongholds, it's just the psychology of war anywhere. When you bomb a resisting group, their resolve gets stronger. And as history shows, the situation in Libya may follow a course already familiar to Western politicians. We have to give full credit to the, uh, uh, to the U.S. Uh, political establishment and the military establishment. They've been always very creative in finding enemies. Uh, first it was the Soviet Union, and then it was, it was the Russian Federation, and then King Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein. And these days, of course, we have Muammar Gaddafi, and uh, the next ones will come, of course, definitely, whenever the need arises. Moscow has expressed concern over the situation in Libya numerous times, saying the coalition is using excessive force. But protests from countries like Russia, China and India have gone unnoticed by the West. And while NATO decides on its ultimate goal, who knows how many more lives will be lost. Irina Galushko, RT, Moscow.